Good morning, my lovies. I mean, morning. When I say morning, it's five in the morning. I've been up since two something, rumbling around the house. Whew. Had a wonderful day in service yesterday. Yes, I put up a, a live video and um, we went to Orlando. That's why our service was the one that's preaching. That's our leader, Bishop Charles Wilson. And um, we have churches all over and it's up under the same bishop. So uh, we went to my hometown because we have, you know, church there in Orlando. So he went to the local service there and we really you talking about the Lord blessed, the Lord answered my prayers, the Lord gave me some more peace, some more joy. So usually um, I couldn't sleep because I'm like, you know, I'm not worried but bothered by some of my problems. But this morning when I woke up, I couldn't sleep because the Lord gave me so much to pull from out of the service. So that live um, part that I put up, it was shaking. And it probably made you dizzy. I'm sorry. But um, I just wanted you to get a little taste of Jesus going on right then and there live. But um, we do, our church do um, go on Facebook and um, do the whole service live on Facebook. Um, I think they take out the prayer and um, uh, um, they take out the prayer because, you know, but the preaching and the singing and stuff, all of that's there. But then we do pray. But, you know, they cut it during prayer time, you know. But um, what else I was going to say? But that was just a, a small snippet. And that was just um, for Orlando um, local service. And some of us from around the round um, cities, we went to enjoy what the Lord had to say. You all see how my nose is crooked right there? It's because I have, and it's on a lot of my videos, um, I'm getting root canal work done, and it is infection all up under there. And they keep, um, they, they cut my gum, and then they, excuse me, the grossness, they press out the infection, and, um, but it came back, so, um, I got to go back. So you see how crooked it is? This side lower and that's higher. And I can feel the infection. So yeah. But um, yeah, I just, I'm just, I'm rambling. And I know this video can only be 15 minutes long. Mm. But yeah. So that was just a small part of what's, um, taste of what I had yesterday. Mm. But I am going to link um, another portion of it that I did videotape. It wasn't live, but I videotaped. But I was only videotaping portion of it, another 15-minute portion of it. Um, but I am going to try to link the um, whole service because we do have we do have a YouTube. Um, channel for our church. It's it's called PCG. That's a shame. PCG called out. PCG called out 1955. That's when our church started. The foundation with Apostle Reverend W. J. Peterson. So um, and it's still going on. Um, I'll leave the script. I'll leave that um. YouTube video in a link below not the video but where you can pull it up um a whole lot of services going on and um I know I often say praying that it'll do you good no I know that it will do you good so yeah so but I am going to put up another 15 minute snippet like I said I videotaped the one I'm going to put up a little later on today I was going to save it to tomorrow but this thing is so good this word is so good. Jesus is so good. So, let me get to it. We are moving on. This is the journal. I'm sorry, but throw that right back there for a minute. We are moving on to... I may not have enough time. Ugh. 
We are moving on to week six. Week six, I, I hope you all were able to leave um, description um, in the comments below some of your, your priorities. And I did leave, um, I did talk about mine in my last video to end in a week five. So I hope you all will be able to have time to leave me. I was looking for it, looking for some. So, you know, your priorities and, you know, where you hung them at. You know, I was looking for them. Hang on with me because it's going to be time where y'all going to have to tell me, Twana, come on, come on. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry I'm doing this late because we got home late later on in the evening yesterday because traffic was so bad coming back and all of that and we waited around church and um you know and conversated and everything but let's get right into it we're on the beginning of, i'm sorry my alarm went off so it cut me off we're on the beginning of week six what's draining you that's the title what's draining you within each of us is a hidden store of energy Energy we can release to complete in the marathon of life. And that was written by Roger Dawson. That's a quote. And take time for your life. I dedicated a chapter to identify and eliminate energy drains as a way to replenish our energy and renew our enthusiasm for life. The concept of eliminating what drains you is a powerful one. In the past, when working with clients, I often recommended that we focus the first three to six months on our work together on this one ideal alone. By getting rid of the things that were draining, a were draining a client's energy, the client was emotionally and physically freed up, and as a result, they can begin to attract better things into their lives. For an example, when I first began working with Lisa, a CPA from a small accounting firm, she was surprised to hear that my recommended strategy for increasing her client base, her primary goal, was to clean up the piles of files that decorated her office floor. I knew from past experience during my tax consulting days that the client files left around the office drained her energy, whether she was in her office or not. These files represent unfinished work that needed to get handled. And any time she even thought about them, she immediately felt weighed down. Even though Lisa wanted to add new clients to her firm, this added weight actually kept them away. Lisa even admitted that each time her phone rang, she felt herself cringe at the additional work that might be on the other end of the line until Lisa felt freed up emotionally by eliminating the unfinished work, there was a good chance that she would block herself from adding new clients. Once Lisa dedicated time to handling these files and eliminating the piles of paperwork, new clients started to show up almost like clockwise, like clockwork. One day in particular, after finishing her to-do list, and putting all of her files in a file cabinet, she actually had three calls from new clients in one afternoon. And because her office had been cleared up, the piles, she felt more confident in her ability to handle work. And this confidence made her much more attractive to potential clients. It's amazing what eliminating energy drains can do to our mood. Remember how good you felt when you finally went through your closet and cleaned out the old clothes that you were sure you'd, you wouldn't wear again someday? Or finally paid the bills that you had been avoiding in your bills to pay pal? Hmm. Once we go through and plug these energy drains, especially the ones that cause an anxiety and stress, we free up enormous amount of energy to be used for better things. Although eliminating energy drains can be about the importance of removing unwanted clutter, getting organized, or handling the little annoyance to, of day-to-day -day living, topics we'll cover in future 
chapters. This week, I'd like you to focus on identifying attached, the kind of drains that cause you to feel emotionally distressed, over overburdened, overwhelmed. These energy drains cost too much. To identify the energy drains that might have emotional strings attached, ask yourself the following questions. One, is there a phone call I need to make or a conversation I need to have that I keep avoiding? Two, have I said yes to a commitment that I now regret? Three, Am I involved in a project that no longer holds my interest? Four, is there something I'm doing that I know should be delegated to someone else? Five, am I pursuing a goal that no longer makes sense? Six, am I holding on to something in my home or office that represents a difficult time in my life or that keeps me attached to the past? Seven, Am I dealing with a sick child or an aging parent alone? The answer of these questions may reveal important energy drains that need to be handled. For example, when you keep pursuing a business that's not succeeding regardless of what you do, the effort steals your energy. When you hang on to files that contain divorce papers, old financial records, cards from former lovers, or college textbooks that represent a career you didn't pursue, these items can keep you tied to the past and may actually prevent you from moving on with your life. And when you're dealing with the most emotionally challenging energy drains of all, such as a sick child or an aging parent, trying to do it all alone will steal the energy you need to be there for your loved one. When you finally let go of the past or handle the items that, you, that cause you anxiety, that action alone can help a dramatic positive impact on your life. For an example, freeing up your energy and eliminating your anxiety makes you more productive and effective at work. Or your relationships grow stronger because you're able to be present for others and not only do you feel better but you also make physical and mental spaces for great things to come into your life like a new friend or romantic partner a new job or even more money now that you realize the cost of these types of energy drains and the benefits of getting them handled it's time to take action here is the Take Action Challenge. This week, we'll focus on eliminating some of the energy drains that have been draining you physically and emotionally. Using the four-step process below, free yourself from the emotional strings that bind you, which I will list them below in the description box. One. Scan your environment for five energy drains that have emotional strings attached. Consider the things in your home office, relationship issues that might be draining you, or work-related problems that need to be handled. Two, schedule time to handle these five items. Three, as you prepare to handle them, make sure you get support from those things that you rather avoid. For an example, if going through old records or items from the past cause you to feel upset or nervous, ask a friend to sit with you as you weed through them. Four, break the task into small steps and get to work. Five, build in a reward. Once you finish a task, do something enjoyable to reward yourself and to motivate you to continue with the process. All right, so this is what you're going to write inside. Uh, this is what you should write and what I'm going to write inside of my makeover journal.